Hello everyone. This World Wetland Day, we have our guest expert, Ms. Amy Smith, with us, and she is the Global Blue Carbon Project Lead at Conservation International. Welcome, Amy. Thank you, Aishi. It's great to be here. Yeah. Could you please tell us about your journey in this particular field and your work on wetlands? Sure. So currently, I'm the Global Blue Carbon Project Lead at Conservation International, and so in this role, a lot of what I do is looking for blue car- carbon projects worldwide where there is a climate mitigation benefit from blue carbon ecosystems, uh, which include tidal wetlands like mangroves, salt marsh, and seagrass. And so within this, we're looking for both potential carbon crediting projects, but also projects that might not be well suited to carbon crediting mechanisms and could have kind of a a different finance source. Um, I was just going to say in terms of kind of my career journey here, I have a background in conservation biology and a master's degree focused on terrestrial forest carbon research. And so that led me to working for Vera for about six and a half years. And Vera is um, one of the main standard setting organizations uh, with uh, carbon crediting standards, but also others. But that's where I really started to kind of work in the wetland space and specifically in the tidal wetlands and blue carbon space um, before I moved over to conservation international about um, a year and a half ago. Yeah, so you have a good experience in this particular field and you also worked on wetlands. I've seen your research papers also in this particular, focusing on this particular area only. So why are wetlands considered a vital ecosystem actually? Yeah, so wetlands are extremely important for climate change mitigation and adaptation because tidal wetlands in particular store a very large amount of carbon compared to other ecosystems. So in comparison to tropical forests, mangroves store um, over four times the amount of carbon on average that's in your average tropical forest. And why this is important for climate change mitigation is when um, tidal wetland ecosystems are lost or are converted to other types of land use through things like agriculture, aquaculture, or development. All of that carbon can be released to the atmosphere, contributing to climate change and global warming. So stopping the loss of these ecosystems from that perspective is extremely important. And also these tidal wetland ecosystems are really good at sequestering carbon when they're restored. So they can also be part of kind of the climate change mitigation puzzle um, to restore ecosystems that have been converted. And in addition, they're also really important for climate change adaptation. So we know that sea levels are rising due to climate change. And also there's evidence that in certain areas, storm events are getting more severe and leading to more severe flooding. And so tidal wetlands can act as kind of this buffer um, to help like slow down the impacts from sea level rise or to um, mitigate the impacts from like a storm event on local communities and to help prevent some of those most severe impacts. Yeah, you told about the mitigating impact, uh, like wetlands are mitigating climate change impacts. And you said that uh, carbon sequestration is a important thing which they do. Apart from this thing, are there any major, other major role they play? Of course, communities, local economies are also uh, gaining from wetland conservation and we are noticing that they can contribute a lot in carbon sequestration. Anything else which directly connects to mitigating climate change impacts? So, I mean, in terms of mitigating climate change impacts, um, it's really those those two things, the carbon stocks and carbon sequestration and adaptation. But of course, wetlands also have a really important role in a lot of economic activities and in fisheries health in particular. So for certain types of fisheries, they can be really important for kind of like fish nurseries so that fish grow up to be healthy and to kind of maintain the fish population. And of course, that's important for biodiversity, but it can also be important kind of economically or for food food security for local people. And in addition, there's also just kind of other roles that wetlands play to make them really important. So not just with fish, but also with crabs or other crustaceans. Um, And they do have a role in kind of water quality and making sure or kind of helping to improve water quality within an area. Yeah. So we are seeing that how they are mitigating climate change impacts. If we go reverse, is climate change actually impacting wetland ecosystems? 
within these years when we are observing climate change? Uh, is yes, that absolutely. So with sea level rise, what we're seeing or expecting to see in certain areas as um, sea levels rise is that in some cases, the wetland will kind of need to migrate um, because there's kind of like a, a specific zone where most tidal wetlands live and thrive um, in terms of like how frequently they're covered with water or the tide or how deep it goes. Um, and so as sea level ri rises, some wetlands will need to kind of like migrate. If there's an area where there's, you know, other types of like natural ecosystems behind them, there can be this kind of shift inland as sea level rises. But in a lot of areas where tidal wetlands are, um, there is, you know, infrastructure or a city or agriculture or something that will prevent um, that migration. And so in certain areas, there could kind of be this squeeze where wetlands are reduced from sea level rise or kind of just completely um, gone due to that. And then another aspect is related to um, increased storm severity in certain areas. Um, so obviously, as I mentioned, wetlands do play this really important role of kind of mitigating the impacts from those types of severe storms or severe flooding events, but they can also be affected by them. Um, and so as storms get stronger, there could be larger impacts on the wetland ecosystems. And, um, you know, in certain cases, they may be so large that they can't kind of naturally come back after a storm event occurs. Exactly. Yeah, that's how they act. Like they actually act as natural buffers against these weather events but climate uh, and they also aid in climate change adaptation through that yeah but when they become severe it uh, the ecosystem is harmed wetland ecosystem yeah that's exactly that's yeah and uh, because of climate change we are seeing the precipitation pattern being changed globally uh, it's uh, it is affected so are wetland ecosystems affected or their ability to store water because of precipitation pattern changes yeah, so I I can't speak specifically to um, like precipitation patterns and how they might be changing, but um, for wetland ecosystems and for tidal wetland ecosystems, they exist kind of in this um, really unique zone where in most cases they're getting salt water coming in from the tide and from the sea, but they're also dependent on fresh water kind of coming from um, another source. And so they exist in this area where it's um, salty, but not too salty. And so if you're changing kind of that mix of like having more fresh water versus salt water, you could actually see an increase in certain tidal wetlands um, where maybe the area is very saline. But in other cases, it might make the, um, the area too fresh for a tidal wetland ecosystem to really exist and thrive. Um, and in that case, there can also be some like chemical changes in the soil that can lead to the release of the stored carbon, um, just because it's no longer in um, kind of that very saline environment where um, the carbon kind of stays as long-term organic carbon rather than being decomposed and released back to the atmosphere. Yeah, so they can even impact the chemical properties of soil, right? That's yes. Really Okay, uh, so almost every type, kind of wetlands, they have a certain type of soil or it uh, varies from place to place. place. Uh, is it like that, uh, you know, deserts, it's sandy soil only. So wetlands only also have a specific soil? Yeah, so usually in tidal wetlands, um, there are really large amounts of organic soils. Um, and so we kind of joke um, that it's called blue carbon because it's related to the ocean, but really it should be called like brown carbon or black carbon because when you go and actually get into the soil, it's this very rich, um, deep organic soil. And so in some cases in mangroves, there can be um, like multiple meters going down of this like organic layer of soil, just because it's had this organic material kind of building up and not decomposing over thousands of years. So usually within these ecosystems, that's what we see. If you're looking at like a restored um, tidal 
uh, wetland ecosystem, you won't have usually that deep of a layer because some of it has been lost and it takes quite a while for it to build back up. Um, but yes, generally what we're looking at is kind of this very rich organic um, soil in a lot of these ecosystems. And that's where um, a lot of the carbon is stored within them and why it's so important to protect them um, for climate change mitigation. Yeah, so if the wetlands are lost, we lost a huge chunk of organic soil, which is very exactly. Okay, it's, it's really great. So because of this, we have an economic significance of wetlands also. Like this is one of the economic significance of wetlands, right? Soil conservation and the good quality soil. Yes. So can you discuss about the other economic significance of wetlands for industries and local economies? Yeah, so I think the other economic benefits are really um, related to, at least that I am familiar with, um, are really related to kind of how the wetlands contribute to some of the local economies. And so with things like um, fisheries or um, being home to like crabs that um, local communities might go out and catch and uh, kind of other ways that they can be used in that way. Um, and then also related to some of the adaptation benefits that we talked about already in terms of protecting or helping to buffer against um, storm impacts on infrastructure or cities or people's homes and things like that. So uh, even industries can be benefited for that. Uh, yeah, exactly. So uh, there have been wetland restoration programs everywhere. And uh, uh, have you seen some good examples of this? wetland restoration projects that have effectively addressed climate change challenges? Yeah, so I think um, within Conservation International, we have worked on a few wetland restoration projects. Um, in particular, I'm thinking of one in Mexico, where actually I think they're out today doing some of the restoration activities. And um, one of the things that we always try to do in our restoration is to look at kind of ecosystem restoration of um, mangroves or other wetland ecosystems. Um, and I know that in certain cases, there has really been a focus on like planting. Um, so planting mangroves, but in a lot of cases, we found that um, if you just plant mangroves without addressing some of the other reasons why the ecosystem has changed, um, those mangroves won't thrive after a couple of years. And so this project in Mexico is actually going to um, dig and clear channels to help restore the connection between um, the freshwater source kind of behind the mangroves to the mangrove ecosystem. Um, which will help reduce the salinity of the water there and help the mangroves to kind of come back and thrive again. Um, and so that source was cut off. So they have been um, kind of dying over quite a few years. And so this restoration activity will help um, kind of make the conditions right for mangroves to thrive again in that area. Okay, so that's a wonderful case of Mexico. In um, U.S., are there any projects like the projects which you are undergoing right now, the restoration ones, are they showing some significant results? Yeah, so um, within Conservation International, we actually don't do much on the ground work within the U.S. Um, so I can't speak to specifically to any of the projects there. I know that other groups have done um, wetland restoration within the U.S. And um, in particular, a lot of research has been done there. Um, but I, I can't speak too much to them since I'm not um, kind of familiar on a firsthand basis with that work. Okay, yeah. Since this year's theme was is uh, wetlands and human well-being, and it's directly connected, wetlands are directly connected to climate change, and we are suffering from its impacts right now. So that's what focus is, bring a focus to wetland and their importance a lot, and especially when they provide us good ecosystem services as well. They become a vital ecosystem for the survival of this planet uh, going through. Uh, apart from human beings and this urban society, wetlands also conserve a huge, um, uh, a huge variety 
of flora and fauna. So they will also be impacted and uh, as comparison to forest, is it very low, the number of the diversity of wetlands or forest or it's almost similar? Um, I, I, I can't speak to like the real comparison, but wetlands are extremely important for biodiversity. Um, and they do, many of them do have quite a few species. So, um, one of the projects that we are working on in Colombia with mangroves is helping to restore this habitat. And they're also monitoring for, um, improvements in the population of manatees and caiman and a number of fish and a number of birds um, that are there and that kind of make their home in and around the mangrove ecosystem that's being conserved. Um, and so wetlands are extremely important for biodiversity, um, for both kind of commercially important species with fisheries, but also for um, species that may be more important for the, the ecosystem and kind of the overall ecosystem health. Yeah, and it was a new, so it, it's, it has always been a new that wetlands are a hub for migratory birds. Like uh, that's a place, resting place for them and very important. And since when we are losing wetlands, we are losing a huge population of those birds as well. So it's also important for them, no? Yeah, exactly. And um, so we're at a very early stage of looking into um, a, a salt marsh project that is along those kind of migratory bird routes. And so in addition to um, some of like the climate change mitigation benefits that we're kind of focusing on, there are all of these other reasons why it's important to focus there. Um, and that migratory bird habitat and route is one of um, those really important reasons. To conserve wetlands. Yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. Um, even so, we have this particular day to uh, pay attention to wetlands, their restoration and conservation. I hope through our session, uh, people got to know a lot more about wetlands and their importance. Uh, especially in the time when we are facing uh, so many extreme weather events due to climate change, conserving these uh, biodiversity areas will help a lot in climate change adaptation and mitigating its effects. And thank you so much for uh, all the knowledge you shared with us and uh, it will definitely help and benefit our viewers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ayushi, for the opportunity um, to speak on this and to speak on the importance of wetlands. And I hope everyone has a great International Wetlands Day. Thank you so much.